uh, agent-based model is newer, uh, newer thing. Until, let's say, year 2002, people are not seriously doing any agent-based modeling. Uh, the reasons are, well, the technology wasn't ready, computers were slow, and agent-based modeling tends to consume a, a lot of uh, computer or CPU power and memory. Uh, the methodology of agent-based modeling suggests that, okay, you may not know how the system as a whole thing behaves. You may not know uh, what are the uh, global variables and their dependencies, but you may have a, you may guess how individual objects in your system work. And you may start specifying behavior of individual objects, be, be that like, uh, people, pieces of equipment, competing companies, whatever, and uh, put them together in a certain environment, let them maybe communicate, and see, okay, what, what kind of uh, global or system level behavior will emerge out of that communication. And uh, that's what agent-based modeling is about. Uh, it's a, let's say, bottom-up modeling where you start, okay, this guy behaves that way, this guy behaves this way, link them, and see what happens. Agents can not only be material things, but also ideas, projects, um, innovations, organizations, anything. Uh, example, one of our um, clients years ago was uh, Wimplecom, the trademark Beeline. And uh, the model was a uh, market of uh, cell, uh, cell telephone users. I will not show you the uh, real model because it's, uh, it's a property of uh, Wimpelcom, but I'll show you a, um, let's say, a sketch that was uh, done before that as a kind of proof of concept uh, in very different terms. But that uh, simple model uh, then was used in a lot of consumer market models like this. So what I'll show you is actually kind of game. Oh yeah. We have uh, three companies, red, green, and blue. They compete in a market. So they have three products. Products are equally good. So you can buy red product or you can buy uh, blue product, it, functionally, it wouldn't matter for you at all. Uh, what companies can do? Vary price, uh, do promotion campaigns, uh, well, local or global. Well, the obvious goal of any company is to maximize revenue and uh, maximize market share. Consumers, in this case, people modeled as agents. Well, they are geographically distributed. Um, at any time, a consumer has its, his favorite brand, like he buys red products for a certain period of time. Uh, they exhibit also brand loyalty. So even if they think that, well, uh, Maybe blue is better, but I'll stay with the red. Uh, but they, they can switch from one product to another due to a number of reasons. And this is what consumers are sensitive to. Promotion, advertising, word of mouth, and price. So roughly, how do we model loyalty and switching behavior? This guy uh, is red. He buys red product. This is exactly what I was telling you a second ago. Uh, this is his perception in his head, how good are the products. So yeah, I know that blue is probably better, but the difference is not big enough. So I'll 
stay with, with the red. It's, it's loyalty. So uh, this guy uh, is under constant influence of advertising, uh, other people, and also ob obviously he monitors the, the prices. So all this stuff done by the blue company can cause him to switch. So his mental perception of the blue product may grow so big that the switch will occur. So that's kind of uh, uh, a fundamental, uh, fundamental in terms of like basic, uh, basic model of consumer behavior. Uh, demo. The uh, model is called uh, Candy Promotion Game, and uh, Candy was chosen just for the demo purposes. Okay, <clears throat> agent-based model. Each dot here is an agent, a person. Obviously, the color of the dot is the currently preferred brand. Uh, market shares, uh, same thing in time. Uh, well, some parameters which we will not touch. Okay, so initially, all companies did have equal market share. Prices are exactly the same. If I run this model, not changing any parameters. Uh, I will see that these, for <clears throat> some reason, the red company starts to dominate the market completely. Can anybody tell me why? So initial conditions were equal, prices equal, no promotion campaigns. Red grabbed the market share. Uh, yeah, well. Uh, no, no. We um, everything is absolutely symmetrical here. Initial conditions and and the 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 people don't have any. Nothing has been programmed for the preference of a particular brand here. But uh, still, red got the market. Yeah. Did the uh, red consumers uh, traveling uh, between the five areas more? No, 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 no. They it, everything is equal. Yes. These are very good guesses. Uh, the, um, let's say, a good uh, hint would be that this model is stochastic and accidental switches between the products are possible. And? Can I assume that it's because it works or has worked with the model? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So the model is stochastic. So People can accidentally switch between products. So at certain point in time, occasionally, they appear to be more adopters or more uh, adopters of red brand than of the other two. And then the word of mouth starts working. Exactly. So <coughs> in another simulation run, we can well observe the blue company grabbing the market share or the, the, the green one or the yellow one. So that's what's, uh, what happened in our case. Let's just uh, do a couple of... Uh, but may I ask you, why, yeah. uh, why is it still the market share? Why all this? 
why? Yes, for the exact, exactly the same reason. So there are people that sometimes think, oh, I'll go to the shop and, well, I'll buy like blue candy. So the, uh, and that uh, property uh, of people uh, allows the other two companies to be still in business. So that's, uh, yeah, that uh, uh, was a good question, actually. All right, so um, in these circumstances, the, the uh, green company decides to lower the price. And uh, people are sensitive to price. So slowly in the beginning and very rapidly at the end, the green company grabs uh, the biggest market share. Again, why slow in the beginning and very rapidly later on? Be just because of, so the, the, the initial people, they switched be just because of price. Uh, but later on, as the number of adopters of the uh, uh, green product uh, grew bigger, they were starting to spread word of mouth around. <clears throat> so at this corner, um, okay, I'll, I'll pause the model at this interesting point. So this guy, he's buying uh, uh, green products, but he thinks that the blue product is, uh, is better. He is still with, with the green. So um, let's say at this point in time, the blue company does promotion. And look, this guy switched. So that is the effect of promotion of, uh, but uh, pre the memory is limited and people will not remember, not be influenced uh, by this promotion campaign um, in the future. So if this blue brand is not supported anymore by promotion, then his uh, market share shrinks. So, uh, well, things to remember about agent-based modeling, and this is a typical, uh, one of the typical applications of agent-based modeling, uh, uh, consumer choice uh, models is that, okay, we do model individual objects and their internal behavior. Uh, they may be put in a certain environment that also has its own dynamics. In this case, companies create environment for the consumers and may influence them. And, um, uh, well, people can, can communicate. And the global graphs like this one or that one uh, are result of, let's say, um, system level um, behavior of, of, the, uh, of many individual elements, agents uh, being put together. All right, so uh, do I have anything else before the break? Yes, nothing. So uh, first part is finished. Uh, questions before we make a break. Second part is, will be pretty different. It's, it'll be mostly um, demos. I'll show you some movies shot from the real, uh, uh, real models, real simulation models. Mm, and then we'll, we'll probably consider one fairly large project from the beginning to the end. It's a large industrial project. And we will talk about, okay, what uh, typical simul how typical simulation based project uh, is done, what are the stages, what you should, you know, be aware of, uh, that sort of stuff. Okay. Yeah, may I ask a very sure. short question? It's uh, concerning your relationship plan. At what stage do you leave the client? For example, after you have created the model and you explain how it works, when do you say that now it's your work to be done? Um, it? Can, uh, can be different. Uh, it also depends, of course, on the, the purpose of the, uh, of the let's say, um, simulation-based project. Uh, if the client was just looking for an answer, okay, like, 
uh, whether to buy more trucks or to rent trucks, uh, or to build this thing here or to build it there. Uh, then that may be, you know, uh, you just basically de deliver a report and maybe uh, show the model, but the client is not really interested in you know, playing later on with the model. Sometimes a client asks to leave the model with him and to teach his, uh, his own staff to use the model, sometimes to modify the model. So it, it, really, it really differs. Uh, if the model is really used in the uh, operational environment, then uh, we're supporting if we, if we do the model, uh, we're supporting the client for like years. Uh, but these are just the cases when uh, we act as a consulting company. Uh, the, well, in most of our, most of our licenses are used by somebody else. So we just sell licenses and we provide tech support. And people within the companies or within the other consulting companies do the actual modeling. It depends. It depends.